Hi there. You may have heard about a small little beetle that's taking over trees in South Africa, leading to the death of thousands of trees um, in Johannesburg and Neisner and George um, and many other parts of South Africa. So this project is actually aimed at assessing the threat of this beetle, the polyphagous shuttle borer beetle and its symbiotic fungus to deciduous trees in the Western Cape province of South Africa. So the culprit is a minute little beetle, about two millimeters in length, or about the size of a sesame seed, um, which means that it's quite easily missed in its initial infestations of, of trees. The small beetle has a massive name called the Uvalaceae fornicatus, or the fornicating Uvalaceae um, powder post beetle. So initial symptoms on a tree um, are very difficult to detect. Um, you will only see small little holes going straight into a living tree. Um, these holes are about one millimeter in diameter or the size of the tip of a ballpoint pen. Um, once the beetle gets through the bark of the tree, it starts drilling straight into the tree, um, into the sapwood. Um, and you can see in the top row of pictures there, there's a little hole in the tree there. And as you start digging deeper into that tree, you can see a brown little stain around the hole. That is a fungus that the beetle brings into the tree called Fusarium and that Fusarium fungus actually um, is what helps the beetle to overcome tree defenses and this fungus might be very harmful to the tree and eventually lead to tree death. At the bottom right there's a section through the tree in which you can see the tunneling system of the beetle. In that picture you can see the mom, that is the beetle that originally started the colony or started making the gallery system in the tree. She laid then eggs and from these eggs we got various um, brothers and sisters that hatched and these can actually mate um, and have fertile offspring. So what this means is that the beetles actually do not need to mate before they enter a tree and a single female can start a whole new outbreak in a new area. So you might find this really strange, but this beetle actually does not eat the trees that it actually can kill. They have some strange eating habits in that they are one of quite a few species that need symbiotic fungi to live. And these are called ambrosia beetles. And the polyphagous shuttle borer has three main fungal symbionts, two of which are pathogens, but the most important of these is Fusarium uvalaceae, or that pink fungus you can see in that picture. So the beetle does not feed on the tree at all, it feeds on the fungus, um, and the fungus leads to the dieback disease that can kill the tree. This makes it also very difficult to control the beetle because it doesn't actually ingest the plant material that we try um, to control the beetle with. So in terms of hosts, it is really important to know that these beetles attack quite a lot of different tree species. Over 200 tree species um, can be colonized by the beetle um, or the fungus or both. There are two different types of hosts for the beetle. The first of which and the most important is the reproductive hosts. And these are hosts in which the beetle can penetrate, inoculate the tree with the fungus, and the beetle can actually complete its life cycle. And these are the trees that will often die. In non-reproductive host trees, the beetles can penetrate the tree, uh, the fungus can grow, but the beetle cannot complete its life cycle. So the beetle cannot actually reproduce in these trees. The tree often survives in these cases, even though some actually have severe symptoms from the fungal infection. So on the slide, there's a whole list of some of the agricultural hosts that we know host the beetle or the fungus. At the top there is avocado, um, which we know is a reproductive host for the tree and they actually have severe issues with um, the beetle on the avocado crops. We've also found it in pecanuts and macadamias. In both of cases in South Africa, there doesn't seem to be any danger of the beetle on these hosts. Then also in garden settings, we've found the beetle on apple, cherry, peach, guava, grapevine, and various other prunus species. However, we know absolutely nothing about whether the beetle can reproduce in these trees or whether the fungus will be a danger to these trees. Invasive trees or windbreak trees can also be a problem in that they, lead, that they can act as breeding hosts for the beetle and these beetles will then move onto the crops and 
infect the crops with the fusarium disease even though the crop trees themselves do not support beetle reproduction. So this leads to the proposed project in which you want to test the pathogenicity of this fusarium fungus associated with the beetle on various crop trees, for instance apple, peach and cherry, from which we've isolated the fungus now um, and we want to do pathogenicity tests of this fungus on these in growing areas in the Western Cape province. And we also want to determine the effect of this infection on plant, plant characteris, characteristics such as timing of bud break, first leaves emergence, uh, different stages of the flowering, number of flowers and fruit per unit, for instance branches, the size of the fruit, the size of the leaves and number of leaves, and any external disease symptoms such as chlorosis, wilting, streaking or gummosis. Here's just a summary of the people involved, some of the references and then some of the expected outcomes of this project. Thank you for your time.